Hello everyone. From this video, we are going to start a series on chapter 1 of CBSE class 11th maths, which is sets. So the first video of the series is going to be what are sets? My name is Tejesh Kalki from Tupai Academy. Now let's get started. So we'll start with the general English meaning of the word set. You may have heard sentences such as this is a set of books. These are a set of pens. So generally in English, a set refers to a collection of particular objects. The same is true in maths. A set is a well-defined collection of objects. The collection of objects is okay, but what does well-defined mean here? Here well-defined means that the set is defined such that the set does not vary from person to person. Let's understand this with an example. Consider the top three YouTube channels for maths. Now here, if you ask these three persons, the first person will say, Sir, Baiju's channel is good and then there is some ABC, XYZ. And then if you ask second person, he will tell, Sir, instead of the channel ABC, you can use Tupai Academy. And then the third person will say, Sir, instead of XYZ, maybe you can name the channel an academy. Like this, every person will tell three different channels as the best. So therefore, it will be different for each person, which means it is not well defined and hence not a set. Now, let's see an example of something that is a set. The first five even natural numbers. So every person know that natural numbers are nothing but one, two, three, four, and so on until infinity. And even numbers are numbers that are divisible by two. So the first five even natural numbers are nothing but two, four, six, eight, and ten. Every person will get the same answer to this. So therefore, it means that this is a well-defined collection of objects. So therefore, it is a set. And the another example of set can be vowels in English alphabet. Every person know that English alphabet has five vowels, which are A, E, I, O, and U. So it does not change from person to person. Every person will name the same five letters. So therefore, it is also well-defined and hence a set. Now let's see another example of something that is not a set. Top three cricketers in India. So when you are naming top cricketers in India, you'll have names such as Virat Kohli, MS Dhoni, Sachin Tendulkar, and some other names. But out of these, everyone can pick three different names. So therefore, it is not well defined and hence it is not a set. I think this gives a general idea of what a set is. Now let's see an example problem. Consider the following statements and tell whether each of them is a set or not. Pause the video and give these problems a try and when you are ready, keep watching for the solution. So the first one, months in a year starting with M. You know that every year have 12 months and out of them, the only months that start with M are March and May. So every person will get the same two months as the result. So therefore, it is well defined and hence it is a set. And then we have three best books for mathematics. Now one trick for this is that if you see words such as best, most, etc. In most cases, these will not be a set. So here everyone has different opinion on best, right? One person's best will not be the best for another person. So therefore, this is not well defined and hence it cannot be a set. And now the third example, factors of the number 34. So you know that 34 can be written as 34 into 1 or 17 into 2. This means that it has four factors which are 1, 2, 17 and 34. So therefore every person will arrive at the same four factors which means it is well defined and hence a set. And then we have all rivers in India. So here this is well defined because the rivers in India are same for everyone, right? No matter who they are, if the river is in India then it is in the set. So therefore all rivers in India is a set. But now consider five most beautiful rivers in India. At first glance, it seems like the same question as the previous one, but here the keyword is five most beautiful. Most beautiful will be different for everyone, right? So if you ask five percent what the most beautiful rivers are, each person will name different rivers as the beautiful. So therefore, it is not well defined and hence cannot be called a set. And now we have the final example, which is all odd natural numbers. So the odd natural numbers are nothing but 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11 and so on until infinity. These are infinite but same for everyone, right? No matter who you ask, they will name the same numbers. So therefore, it is also well defined and it is a set. 
I think now you have the general knowledge of how to distinguish between what are sets and what are not. Now let's see the notations of sets. So when talking about sets, there are several notations you have to use. The first one is that sets are named using capital letters of English alphabet like capital A, capital B, capital C, etc. So for example, suppose you have the set of first five natural numbers then to name that you will name that with some capital letter like capital A. So here capital A will be equal to the set of first five natural numbers which are nothing but 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. And the other thing is that generic elements in a set are named using small English alphabet like small a, small b, small c etc. But here generic element is the keyword but let's see what that means. Let's say small a is an element in set A. It does not mean that small a is literally inside the set but it means that small a can represent any element in the set and that's why it is known as a generic element because it is not literally in the set but it can represent any element in the set. So here a can be either 1, 2, 3, 4 or 5. It can be any one of them. In such cases we will use the small English letters to denote the generic elements of a set. But here comes a problem. Here we know that 1 is an element of set capital A, right? But when representing that, you would have to write 1 is an element of set capital A, 3 is an element of set capital A, and so on. But it is very lengthy process to write everything every time, right? In such cases, there are some notations in mathematics. First, the following symbol tells if an element is in a set and this is read as belongs to. So it means that if A is an element of set capital A, then you will write small a belongs to capital A. So instead of writing full sentences as previously, you can simply write 1 belongs to capital A or 3 belongs to capital A etc. I think you get the concept. But what if an element is not in the set? In that case, we'll use a similar symbol but which is striked out that tells if an element is not in a set and this is read as does not belong to. So for example, if B is not an element of set capital A, then you will write B does not belong to capital A. So in the previous case, you know that 8 is not an element of set capital A and 15 is also not an element of set capital A. But instead of writing the sentences like this, you can simply write 8 does not belong to capital A or 15 does not belong to capital A. This greatly reduces what you need to write, right? Now let's see an example problem based on these notations. Let P be a set of first 5 prime numbers. Then for each of the following, fill the blank with either belongs to or does not belong to. Pass the video and give this a try and when you are ready, keep watching for the solution. So first, we are given the first 5 prime numbers. You might know that the first 5 prime numbers are nothing but 2, 3, 5, 7 and 11. So in our given statements, first we have 1. Clearly 1 is not among these 5 elements, so therefore 1 does not belong to P. And then we have 5, 5 is in this set, so therefore 5 belongs to P. And then we have 15, clearly 15 is not in this set, so therefore 15 does not belong to P. And then we have 19, 19 is a prime number but it is not in the first 5 prime numbers. So once again you will say 19 does not belong to P. And then we have 11 which is in the set, so therefore 11 belongs to P. And in the similar way, 7 is also in the set, so therefore 7 belongs to P. And then 87 is not in the set, so therefore 87 does not belong to P. And finally, minus 1 is also not in the set, so therefore minus 1 does not belong to P. So this is how you will denote whether an element is in the set or not. Thanks for watching the video. If this video is helpful, please like the video and subscribe to the channel to not miss any future uploads.